Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. We are going to hold on for just a minute or so as additional people we see jumping in. And hopefully you're in the right place. We're going to go over how a custom website and SEO will make it easy for patients to find your practice. And my name is Rebecca. So um, it is now 1030. We're going to jump into the presentation. I want to honor the time that people have set aside and that showed up on time to start this. Um, if you have questions as we're walking through, I just want to remind you that we do have in the GoToWebinar box a panel where you can post any of those questions. And then we have a team that will be looking at that as well. So thank you for joining. There will also be a video later if anyone on your team is interested uh, in seeing the information that we're going over today. So today on the call, I'm very excited. I have um, one of my teammates, Jamie Parrish. She is our search marketing manager. Um, she is amazing. And uh, please post those specific SEO or search engine optimization questions in that go-to webinar panel. She's going to get those answered toward the end of the presentation. And uh, I really think that um, she's fantastic, so you'll enjoy meeting up with her. Again, my name is Rebecca Shade. I have been uh, working with practices, pediatric family practices, for about 16 years love doing it. I'm passionate about just helping practices reach their communities, uh, multiple ways to do that, and hopefully we'll go over some good takeaways for you. We want you to leave with some golden nuggets today. So what we're specifically going to cover, um, responsive website design with SEO is the marketing foundation for your practice. If you want to attract more patients, they have to be able to find you and where they're finding you for the most part. There are referrals and other ways, obviously, to be found. But for the most part, you're going to be found online. Your online presence is just vital. So we're going to look at reviewing the content on your website. Uh, really important for that to be relevant, meaningful, up to date. Uh, we love to say this is your place where you can really shine, tell your story, bring people into that story. How are you reaching your community? Um, and how are you really there to support the family so parents know the services you offer? They may not be even fully aware of what a pediatrician does that is different from um, another family practice or PCP. And so we want you to shine there. We also want to look at how your providers are set up on your website. That is really key. And then we're going to look at social media, calls to action, and making sure when they do find you on your website that they have clear um, direction. What do you want them to do next? How do you want your parents or patients to engage online? So, Kind of a foundational piece here is mobile responsiveness that we're going to look at. About 65 to 70% of your parents and patients for PEDS are going to find you on their mobile phone, not a desktop. Uh, due to that reason, we always build our websites mobile first. It's what we're constantly thinking about, uh, how the end user is going to view your site, the majority of end users, on a cell phone. So, you want to pull up your website and see if it's mobile friendly. Uh, Google is the main search engine. They did the majority of searches in 2022. Lots of search engines. We often refer to Google because um, they really lead the market. 
but they use um, your mobile version of your site's content and they crawl it with a smartphone agent for indexing and ranking. It's called mobile first indexing. Um, and so because they find that really important, we also find that very important. So I want to encourage you, pull your website up on your cell phone. You want to be able to make sure it's very easy to access. The content doesn't go off the side, so you have to slide around differently. You just want to make that easy. Um, even if you're on a desktop, you can also test this really easily. So let me just show you an example of how you would do that. So here we built this site. Go anywhere on the site. I'm usually in the header. You're going to right click. And then you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom to the last option called inspect. When you pull that up, it's going to pull your site up here. You can also refresh um, if something's not displaying just so that that new size um, and the real estate of whatever you're on is going to look correctly. You can pull up different types, uh, phones, tablets. It's a great way to check how your website displays in different formats. So just one more way to look at that. Um, when you checked the responsiveness, if it's not responsive, um, that is something you absolutely need to change, either rebuilding your website. Um, of course, we would love to help you with that. Or you can go back to your current company as well and ask them what they're doing to help you there. It is not very effective to have a separate mobile site. That's how it was done a really long time ago. You want to stay with that exact same URL and just have it be mobile friendly. So I just want to take um, a little pulse here and see where you guys are at. Um, I'm going to launch a poll. So hopefully you guys can see this now. Uh, can you update your website content yourself? Is, is the ability there to go into the back end, make changes to your content? Yes, no, or maybe you're unsure. So really helps me if you can take a moment and fill that in. I see the responses coming in. Thank you very much. We're going to wait a few more seconds here to give people that opportunity. Okay. Ten more seconds here. We just want to make sure everyone has a chance. A little over half of you have voted so far. I'm going to close this poll and um, share the results with you here. So with this, you know, can you update your content? 67% yes, 17% no, and 17% we're not sure, or I'm not sure if you don't know how or if you don't know if that ability is there. So let's keep on going here. Um, we'll hide that. So really important to be able to update the back end of your website and your content because you have to control your messaging. And when you leave that in someone um, else's, like you have to send an email, can you update this for us? And it might take them um, a week, two weeks. <laughs> I actually talked with a company just recently. They sent in a request in January, and it has not been uh, completed yet. This is you know, months and months later, that is hard. So the reason it's important to update is Google wants to see your website content updated on a regular basis. It cannot stay stagnant. And so um, just having that ability to dig in whenever you want is super important. So look at the ease of use. Um, how hard is it? Do you need to know HTML code to update? Or like in our back end, if you know how to use Word, you can update your website. Uh, things that are important and we try to make really easy because Google does want to see your website updated often would be, can you add an alert really fast that would pop up on your homepage in a banner or a pop-up window? Uh, let's say something important happened. You guys have your phone lines went down, but the office is open. Can you communicate that? 
um, maybe your flu shots are in. This is going to be really important in about a month here, setting up your flu clinics, letting parents and patients know it's time, come on in. So can you easily list that alert? Can In that alert, can it link out to wherever they're scheduling or what is their next step that you want them to take? And then also for practice news, we call it practice news, latest news, but to let people know what is going on within your practice and so that they can also take part and know what services you have. So recent updates are really important. Whenever you make an update to your website, I encourage you pull up your website on your phone and test it there. Again, 65, 70% of your parents or patients, that's where they're gonna see the content. So really important that content looks good on a phone. Uh, staff, we know, changes. Often in many practices, they come and go. So with the ease of updating the site, how easy is it to teach a new staff member how to add those updates if you want to have um, additional people doing that? So um, I really love Dr. Katrina Skinner. She's with Women in Pediatrics. And I heard her, she was speaking on having an AED in your practice. Um, I apply that same principle to websites, that we want to have AED to automate, eliminate, and delegate. And so with that, when you're thinking about your website, um, to automate, we want to automate posts or practice news items to make it very easy, um, alerts. So maybe you're thinking about, oh my goodness, our flu clinic's gonna open on Saturday at 8 a.m., but you don't wanna have to go to your website that Saturday at 8 a.m. to post it. We have the ability in the back end that you can write things ahead of time and then it'll post and go live for the dates that you want it to be live. It'll also automatically come down when you're done with that content. Um, for the E for eliminate, you wanna eliminate redundant steps. So here we've um, really been excited. We've been able to look at our reputation management um, and say that we can uh, automate, we eliminate that redundant step of people having to manually send it out. And now it's an automated process if you're part of Office Practicum, but those reviews will go out each day if you wanna sign up for that. And then with your website as well, we wanna delegate. Uh, so often the clinicians do everything. And so I like to encourage practices that, um, you know, the clinicians stay with your patients and you're doing so much there. But if you can delegate parts of the website to someone within your practice, it's more powerful for you. It frees up your time, but it also gives them a sense of um, ownership that they are part of that practice, they're making a difference, and they're able to make updates on your site. So find a staff member um, that loves technology, uh, not afraid of learning new things. If they don't know how to update their back end um, and we have built the site, please set up a training with me. I'd be happy to take them through um, and, and just help them know this is how easy it is to update your website. So we want to take a quick peek at a website here and the back end. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got locked out. Here we go. So here on the website, um, we try to make it very easy for practices just to come in and do updates. So we have the content tree will show up to the left, and then any page you're working on is going to show up on the right. Let's say for our practice, we do want to do a shout out and have an alert for flu shots that are coming up. I could just go to my alerts page and I can say, yes, I want to add a new alert here. But the great thing as well is if it is a practice news item that has come up in the past, I can just edit it. So I can pull up one I have already written, go to edit, and here I can change the release date. So maybe I want this to come out September of this year. I would just update that date. I can change any of my content, and I can have a start and end date in the published date. What is fantastic is you could sit down in one day and add practice news items that are going to populate throughout the year, but you didn't have to go in 12 different times to do it. You set it up once and then you have your dates in here when that will go live. 
We also want to make it really easy um, for the content as you move forward. What can you do? So maybe formula safety is no longer a front page alert. That was a while ago, and it is not live for them. There's a red X. But maybe it's something I still want to be available for practices and, I mean, for the parents or patients to see. So with the web part, I would just take this and all I have to do is move it on down to the new area and click yes. And now it's in practice news. Still important, just not front page worthy. So let us know if you need help with editing that back end, and we are happy to jump in and help you. We're going to do another quick poll here. Let me share this. So checking in your current website, if you pulled it up, did, does each provider's name show up in their individual bio page? with their URL. So um, it should be the name of your practice, you know, .com, .net, forward slash, and then in there is the name of your doctor in the URL. Give you a moment to look at that. Uh, yes, no, or you've never looked. I appreciate the honesty here. We'll give you about 30 seconds to finish filling that in. You might have to pull up your site and look because maybe that's something uh, you're not sure of, but you can check that real quickly as well if you pull up an individual provider um, on your website. We're about halfway there. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. So hopefully you guys can slip in there and tell me yes, no, or you're not sure, haven't looked. And you know, this isn't just a point I want to throw out there. Often practices don't actually look at their own websites. I hope this is pointing out it's really important to look at your website often, um, even have it bookmarked as a favorite page that constantly comes up so you really know what's on your site. I'm going to close this poll and we will share these results with you. So out of this, 29% uh, yes, that is part of the URL, fantastic. 57% no, and 14% um, haven't looked, haven't had a chance. If you're in that 14%, I really encourage you to pull up your website sometime today and take a peek at that. I'm going to hide that, uh, and let's go on. So let's look at what I mean with this. Maybe it was um, not a really clear question as well. But there are certain pages in your website that are going to get much greater traffic than other pages. Uh, your home page, of course, is going to get the most traffic. People are going directly to your home page. Uh, location page, they just want to find you, especially on a cell phone. Location pages come up a lot. They want to click the address, go to a map, and just get there. Um, and provider profiles, maybe they're looking to see which practice, which provider they would like to see, so they're going to look at those. Medical content also right at the top. But let's take a peek here at our example um, at Cactus Pediatrics. I'm just going to pull up their provider page here. So let's say I'm doing a search. Um, we'll go to Dr. Vargas. When I pull up his specific page, you can see in the URL, um, it, it is going to have Cactus Children's, but his name is in the URL. Really important for Google to have his name there. Part of that, if I do a search, and I had pulled this up earlier, I just put his name MD in the search, and it has pulled him up. He's right here at the top. Um, because of how we've set up his profile on the back end, it's connected to the website, and it, that's exactly what you want to see, that your provider is that, that first um, item listed, and it's under your website. Another reason we do this is you're found multiple ways online. So here you're also found under images. 
And so even when you're loading an image of a provider, it's really important that you name every picture on your website correctly. In this case, this picture was named correctly um, with his name, so it's coming up in the search here as well. Jumping on real quick, um, we're going to do another quick poll. I know I've given you guys um, multiple polls here. Let's see, do you have uh, a CTA or a call to action on your home page? So let's go real quickly through this. I feel like there's so much to share in this webinar, um, and we want to have time for Jamie to answer questions as well. So we'll do this really fast. So yes, no, I'm sure, or what's a CTA? I'll keep this open for about 10 seconds here before I jam on to the next. Okay, I am gonna close this poll and share these results with you. Um, so 33% know and 67% aren't quite sure what a CTA is. So let's go over it. Let's um, jump into this real quick. So here I have a CTA, a call to action, is directing the people that land on your website where you want them to click. What is the next step that you want them to take? So most people we read, um, you know, left to right, and it's kind of in a Z formation. So as you're building your site and putting content in there, just be thinking like a Z. So we're going to go straight across, generally down and across again, when we're pulling that content that is important. So let's go to their live site here. Um, it is clear to me what they're wanting me to do when I land on this page. I schedule an appointment. I can go right to the portal. I can pay my bill. I can follow them on social media. So the items you choose in your header are super important. If I'm on a cell phone looking at this in mobile, this is also clickable um, for their phone number here. It's nice and big. I can just click that with my thumb and call the office right away. Um, also, when I go down, that rest of the Z is showing me the other calls to action. Register now. They're telling me if you land here, you're not a current patient, this is how you register. We also have highlighted um, some key medical content that's going to stay within the website, not linking out, that is really important, or the news items. So multiple calls to action on this screen. Here's another one, um, Nibbles and Sprouts. This is a nutrition site for pediatrics. So Dr. Bonnie, she wants to point out what's really important, book a one-on-one. -on -one. That's how her business is built, and so it's how she wants to direct them. There's also a store and a patient portal, but really the first call to action here is let's book an appointment. If I scroll down, more calls to action. Maybe I've come for a very specific item. Uh, my kiddo has food anxiety or is picky, et cetera. So this is gonna take me very quickly within her site to additional information. Another great call to action is telling them, hey, this is how we can contact you. Having a secure form on there, become part of our email group, will keep you in the loop. So having some type of registration, now you've told them what you're looking for. This is my last poll, I'll be really quick. Uh, so with this last poll we're going to look at is really saying, what is your strategy? Um, do you have a clear strategy to bring in new patients? Yes, no, we don't want to grow right now. That's valid. I've actually heard that from practices. They're very happy with where they're at. Um, we're going to address that a little bit, though. And then we rely on hope and prayer. So take a moment. Um, this really helps me know what to go over in the next couple of slides. I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds here. Um, we have some good responses coming in. So 
I'm going to close this out. We are uh, kind of even here. <laughs> um, yes, you have a strategy is even with no, and some people, about a third of you, are relying on hope and prayer. So let's look at some strategy that we can do. Again, just going back to the basics. Um, your website, it has to be responsive, mobile friendly, really important to have SEO. It is the foundation for what we do to be found online. Um, I am going to go very quick here. We have a whole uh, session you guys can watch, a 30 minute video that just goes over online reputation. There are some links here to Apple Business Connect, Google Business Profile. Those need to be set up. Um, but if you can look at the other video, we spend 30 minutes on this one slide. So let's look at uh, search engines, the driving factors for results, um, for local results, meaning right there in your community. If you are located in Colorado, you're not really com um, competing against providers that are in Maryland. You're, it's local, what's right there? So a common question that has come in is um, practices are wanting to rank for cities or areas that are not their actual city location. Maybe it is a suburb of that area, but they're wanting to draw patients from there. And why is that happening? So there are three core driving factors that Google looks at when determining local rankings. That is relevance, distance and prominence. And so those three factors combine and help Google decide the best match for the keyword search that was put in. Um, I like to do the example, you're looking for a restaurant. You pull up, hey, I'm looking for Mexican food. Google is gonna geolocate usually within about a five mile radius um, of where you're at to give you all those restaurant examples, who's open right now, what are their ratings. Um, if you're in a more rural area or there weren't a lot of choices, Google will increase that radius up to about 10 miles. And, um, and that works the same way when you put in, you know, pediatrician near me. Uh, Google is doing the same thing when it's looking for that. So here I already have some info up there, but relevance, um, how close is the search uh, user's query and matches the information that is already located in your local website and you know for your practice what is the relevance those keywords the terms distance that's what we just talked about that geolocation how close are you to where the search is coming from on their phone or desktop and then prominence how well established is this practice are you a new practice with a new website, you do have to work harder to gain that same authority and reputation as an established practice. The longer you own a domain name, the greater the domain authority as well. And we can really deep dive more in there, but this is just an overview today. So strategies, um, how to move forward. There has to be strategy to growth. It can't just be something you're winging. It, you really have to have some details to move forward. So a couple of questions that may help. Do you know the percentage of patients that age out or leave your practice each year? Uh, really great to know that stat because you have to replace that amount just to stay where you're at and then to grow. So on average, a pediatric practice will have five to 8% of their patient population either age out or transfer out to another practice, another state, they've gone to a PCP somewhere else. Um, next one that's important, do you know the average amount of money that is brought into your practice per newborn through age five? So that's really the foundation of relationship, right? Uh, pediatrics, very unique with their patient population. You are building a relationship, usually 20 to 30 years with that family, if not more, mattering how many kiddos are coming through. But what does that look like? Well, building that foundation is really those well visits in the first five years. You have so many times you meet with the family um, and can really establish such a fantastic um, foundation health-wise and relationship-wise. So um, what we say is on average, a practice will generate a minimum of about $5,000 in that first five years. And well child visits are really the bread and butter here. On our websites, we have this laid out so nicely. I won't deep dive here. We have in the past, 
but when you open it up, we've already pre-written content that is completely editable by your practice. Uh, if it's a two to seven day visit, you can change the title, you can change the content. We're linking internally within your site as well, so you're not leaving to get this content. And then something cool, even at age seven, you have both the parent and the patient bright futures. Again, when we click this, and we are not leaving the website, you'll see that I'm still here, but the medical content from the AAP lives here too. So also looking at posts. Um, how often are you posting uh, online? And how often do you engage with your social media? So don't feel guilty here. I know this can be hard for a lot of practices. A good cadence is two to three times a week. Uh, five is fantastic, but baby steps. If you're not posting, you haven't posted in months, then start with saying, we're gonna post a couple times a month and then move on from there. I'm gonna share a calendar with you guys in a moment that may help as well. All right, we are going to now look at SEO, why a lot of you are here today for search engine optimization and what you can actually do uh, to help with your own search engine optimization or other companies like us can also come in and we can assist you. So the number one thing that you should be doing and hopefully have the ability to do is update the content on your website. Uh, Google likes to rank sites it deems as dynamic and not stagnant. So if your site looks static, if there's no changes happening, you will be rated down as a good answer because it doesn't see that new content is coming into the site. So you want to do that regular. Um, you might ask how regular is that? And monthly at the minimum, you want to go in and add new content. If new content comes up more often, that is even better. But monthly is the bare minimum there. Uh, it is great when you're writing that content to really sprinkle in keywords. So if you know you want to rank maybe for a certain area that you want to draw new patients from, then you want to mention that you are meeting uh, that specific community. You want to put their name uh, within the context of a sentence um, on the pages, probably location page, home page some key places, but you also want to keep it really natural. You want to write for humans and never for a search engine robot. Uh, rich snippets are going to be pulled out from your content pages from the search engines when they're giving an answer to something that's been requested uh, in that search bar. The second thing you really want to work on is building up your traffic. So traffic will come back to your site multiple ways. There is organic traffic when someone will type in a search term and Google or whatever search engine you're on will say, yes, this is the best answer, and they direct them back to a specific page on your website. Another way is traffic that is referred from a social channel. Now this can be your social channel. So when you're adding content to Facebook, you wanna all, always, as much as possible, lead them back to your website and to some really good information. So we're gonna look at a calendar here in a minute um, on how to write social media posts. But it's powerful if you're talking about Tylenol dosing. How much Tylenol do I give my eight-year-old? And that's your post on Facebook talking about that. When you link back to your website, you're going to link right to that dosing table for Tylenol. And then when Google looks at it, it says that that is authoritative content, and that will also help with your SEO. Uh, another important thing is links. Links are very important, backlinks, and then reputable sources linking to you. So ways that you can get people to link to you when you're affiliated with a hospital or when you're referring to a certain specialist on a regular basis. Um, if you sponsor a community event, ask them to add your website URL to their site as a partner, a sponsor, um, a trusted resource, and that also helps build authority, which is good for your SEO. Um, we have hit on this multiple times, but medical content is key. It's really important that your medical content as much as possible stays inside your website and doesn't just link to healthychildren.org 
or, I mean, that's great content, but you want the healthychildren.org, the AAP content to open on your website. Uh, we did do a webinar on that that you can deep dive. It was Dr. Google, and it talks all about the importance of medical content. So when you're linking back, um, the same article might be offered on the CDC, NIH, or AAP. Instead, have that article on your website to link to. Let's take a peek at our social media marketing calendar. This is just an example if I'm looking at a five-day week, how these posts might lay out. Um, really great just to take a few moments with some team members and to build this calendar out. So there are some helpful um, just tips in here that you can look at. The best posts are always personalized posts. I had just pulled up a website this morning, and they had a post in general on teens and vaping. Great content. They had one comment and one like on it. The post right under it was celebrating one of their employees and giving them a kudos for what they had accomplished. There were already 200 likes and multiple shares. So as you can see, when you look through Facebook posts, people like it when it's personal. Now, there are times you want to be um, really giving them good medical content that maybe you put in a little story or something extra that makes it personal again. That's really important. Um, your whole goal when you are posting onto Facebook is that even though you want those comments and likes, you really want those people to share it to their own profile. When they put it um, out there, then they have reshared and you have a whole new audience. And so that's what the goal is, to reach more people, to reach more families, and that is done when your posts are shared. So we have some uh, marketing ideas. When you're laying out your year and thinking, what are the posts we should do? Again, two to three posts a week is a good beginning cadence to have. That's a healthy cadence. Uh, really great if you can do it five times a week. And just that consistency that people know consistent posts are coming from you and they're worthwhile to read. They're reputable and leading back to your website. If you need help with that, we do social media marketing calendars. We would love to help you with your posts. So reach out and we can show you what that looks like as well. Uh, but there's help out there. So when I'm looking at the year and I'm thinking what are relevant topics, we have some links here that you can go to. I just pulled up one from a children's hospital from Lurie. And here if I look at national awareness, um, I can go through and see some important things that are coming up each month of the year and decide, is this something that we want to hit on in our practice and do a post? Probably every month there is something that will stand out and you'll say, yeah, this is something that we could post on that our practice wants greater awareness in our community about. So there are some fantastic things to get you started. Again, those are more general that you're bringing awareness, but maybe you bring it back home with something personal, a personal story for someone in the practice. I'm also thinking time of year all the time. Uh, back to school is here. My kiddo just went back a week and a half ago. So Colorado, we start a little bit early. But um, there is, there's factors that come with that. There's stress, anxiety, some fear. So it's great when you see posts that are really targeting what's going on in your family's lives, uh, the teens, the children's lives right now. Uh, like I said, having something about dosing. Here we have Tylenol dosing. Medicine dosages are pages that rank high on websites because parents just don't remember when their kid is sick and has a fever, um, what they should do, how to take a temperature, all of those great things. Tie it in on a post and lead them back to your website. If you take part in community events, we just had this a couple weeks ago, uh, here in my city in Colorado Springs, it was a back-to-school backpack bash. Uh, different medical practices came together along with schools and places of worship and all sorts of people in the community said, let's help these teens and kids from kindergarten through 12th grade 
have backpacks filled with supplies to go back to school. It was wonderful and you can post about it. People like to know what you're doing in the community and how you're helping. Uh, videos are a great way too. I've listed two videos in the second section. Um, you might have a new provider or a get to know you provider video. It does not have to be a professional video. You can take your iPhone, do a quick um, 30 second, one minute video for that provider, maybe ask a couple questions or have them with some prepared remarks where they can uh, just get to know the families and parents and present themselves. Here for how to use an inhaler, in some of our medical content, videos are already there. And so you can link right back to those videos, um, like an inhaler, how to correctly use a spacer. It's right there. Again, we're not sending them to YouTube to see that video. It does live on your website, which is important. Um, this is an example. I was talking with a provider who was a camp counselor. They were the camp doctor. They had some great pictures of what happened at camp on their social media feed. Those pictures had so many shares. Uh, people were so excited to see what that provider was doing at camp with the kids and just seeing them in a real environment, uh, really enjoying themselves, but also really being of service to all of those campers. So I have some other fun things uh, listed down here. Lactation. If you guys offer lactation services, maybe make that a highlight and tell them um, when they can come in. Maybe they're not actually a part of your practice, but you offer that service for anyone in your community, then that's something you'd wanna highlight as well. So um, you can come up with this. It looks a little bit less scary. I think when it's already written down, uh, there could be a team of people within your practice that help to pull these together. Or again, we're very happy to um, help you with this. Just reach out to us and we'll do whatever we can for you. And are there any questions that were put in the box today? We're at the very end. Hey, Rebecca, uh, this is Allie from the OP team. Um, great job. Uh, we did get a couple of questions here. Um, so I'll run through those for you real quick. Um, looks like the first one we have is, uh, can I buy just the SEO package if I already have a website? That is a fantastic question. So I could read that a couple of different ways. If we have created your website um, and maybe you don't have SEO with us yet, yes, we can upgrade you and start adding those services to the back end of your website. We would love to do that for you. If somebody else built your website, a third party company, we would have to look at the platform that is built on. Things we can do for you is we can still create a social media calendar. We can do social postings for you and help you in that way. But we would just have to see the back end on a case by case basis to see if we can get in there uh, to do the code changes and other things that are important for SEO. Most of our SEO is done with current clients that we did build their website. Awesome, thank you. Um, next up we have, uh, looks like this, uh, this practice has had the same website for about seven years um, and they're asking, when do you recommend doing an entire overhaul as opposed to just making a few updates? Yeah, that's another great question. So medical practices in general, it's said that they should rebuild about every two years, seven to eight months. Uh, with pediatric practices, that number is a little higher. So most of those are waiting three, four years to rebuild um, because the practice model is a little bit different, but code changes a lot. So it's not always just what a website looks like. It's the functionality on the back end. So when we're building sites, there is a very specific code that we try to use for pediatrics to help you to be found. And because that changes so often, it is important to update. It's also good with fresh eyes to look at your navigation, your site map, seeing what's important, and to get that fresh look. Again, we would be thrilled to help you whether we built for you before or whether you're coming to us from another um, platform, we would love to just talk with you and see what we can do to assist you. Awesome. Thank you for that level of detail. Um, looks like we have just one more here. 
um, how soon should I expect to see results in increased website visits after I have uh, this SEO set up for me? Great question. So I know we are a microwave society. We love things yesterday. We don't like to wait. Uh, building this SEO foundation, it just takes time. Anyone that promises you, hey, I'll start SEO, and in a month or even two months, you're going to be in that snack pack at the top, it's just not likely. It does take that foundational uh, time because once changes are made, uh, very specific code, keywords, things are put in, your site has to be recrawled, re-indexed and then some good answers can come forth. In general, people start seeing some really good results after six months, and then again, if you do um, up to a year, you can really see some growth in what is happening with the SEO that's been done on the back end. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, looks like that's all the questions we have. Um, so I'll throw it back to you. Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, Allie. So uh, thank you everyone for attending. We really appreciate you jumping in, taking time out of your day to be a part of what we're doing. We are uh, always excited, very passionate to help our practices reach their communities, and we would love to continue to help you. Meet us back here again next Wednesday. Uh, we are going to look at managing your patient calls with ease. That seems to be a hot topic across our practices. In fact, if you look at your Google reviews, I was just looking at some again today for a practice, there are often complaints when it comes to a one or two star review that center around they can't reach the office, they've left messages, there's no one returning their calls, they just want to talk to a live person or have a way to get their message through. We have some really cool uh, tips for you and some tricks, and so we're excited to share those with you next week. Here are some resources um, that we also have. This will be sent out, but some of the things we actually went through and touched base on today, and then some additional ones I don't think I pulled up, but hopefully will be um, helpful to you when you look at them. Thank you for your time. <laughs>